and hello YouTube, this is GS Man, I'm smart, and I'm just here to know a brand new video for tutorials with GS, and today's tutorial we're going to take a look at 10 awesome shortcuts that you must know as a Premiere Pro video editor. These are shortcuts that will increase your editing speed by a ton, and they're very helpful. Actually, in fact, up until now, I haven't used some of these myself because I didn't even know about them. But I gotta tell you, I found out about some of these and I'm going to be using these all the time now. Some of these I already use every single time I edit. So these aren't just some shortcuts that I use once in a while or are good to know for certain situations. These are shortcuts that you are going to be using every single time you edit and multiple times during your editing session. So hopefully uh, this will help you out and you can increase your editing time as much as I increased mine. So first of all, we're going to go over something very simple and very basic. And the only reason why I'm going to go over this one is because I feel like it is so important. And I feel like some people just don't do it enough. And that is Control S. Control S is to automatically save your project. And I cannot stress enough how important this is. As you just saw, when I press Control S, the project automatically saves. Now there is an auto save uh, function in Premiere Pro. But I feel like pressing Control S every now and then multiple times throughout your editing session is so crucial and so important i constantly do it every now and then whenever i finish editing a small portion i usually just press Control s and getting in the habit of doing that is very important so that's why i put that as the number one shortcut because it is that that much of an important shortcut now for this next one the up and down arrow keys are very useful because what they allow you to do is move between edit points so as you see, I'm moving between each little uh, clipped off section that I have here. I use the blade tool to make some edit cuts within the video, and I can move between them with the up and down key, which makes it very easy to move around. You don't have to go and you know drag down here, or you don't need to zoom out or zoom in just to find a clip that you want to use. You can literally just move the up and down arrow keys to move between edit points and to move between different clips very quickly and very easily. Now next, using the left and right arrow keys is also very useful as you can basically skip frames. You can go frame by frame here just by pressing the right key a frame forward and you can press the left key to go a frame back. Now if this is too small of an amount, you can hold the shift key and you can move five frames ahead. And if you use the left arrow key, you can move five <laughs> frames back. So a very useful tool, five frames back, five frames forward, or if you want to go one frame by frame, you can move, uh, you can press just the right and left arrow keys once. Next, we have the work area bar. Now what the work area bar is this top gray bar here. If you don't see this bar, you don't have it activated on your timeline. How you can activate this is by right clicking on your timeline's name here, and then just make sure that the work area bar is selected and it has a check mark next to it that'll make it pop up here now what the work area bar is is basically it's a region that is going to be exported so right now i have this entire i have this entire timeline here well basically all the clips are in this work area so i'm going to be rendering this entire thing but what happens if i only want to rent a specific portion of this if say i only want to render from from this edit point right here up until this edit point right here just this little section here how i can do this is press the alt key and then the left bracket that will set the work area to that point and then i can go ahead and move to the next edit point and then and then uh, the alt key again and then the right bracket so alt left bracket to start the work area and alt right bracket to end the work area and that's sort of how you can uh, set your work area up and then you can export that specific region. Now next one I want to go over is the default transition shortcut and this is very useful if you have multiple clips that you want to add the same transition to such as cross dissolve or additive dissolve or dip to black and instead of having to drag them from your effects panel constantly over the clips all you can do is press the control button and then the D button and this will automatically set a like so this will automatically set the default transition that you have set uh, in between those two clips now if you want to set your own default transition what you have to do is go to the effects panel here and the orange border around is the default 
a transition. So what you can do if you want to change it is right click another one and select this one as a default transition. And you can select whichever one you want and then that will be your control D transition that you can use as a default. The next one I want to go over is very useful and I use this one constantly. This is the minus and the plus sign, which will basically zoom in and zoom out into the timeline. If you really want to get in close to make your edits, uh, to drag something left or to the right, or if you want to get out to do a more general, larger edit to move things around, uh, using the plus and the minus key is very good. You can also use the alt key and the scroll wheel on your mouse. However, you don't have a scroll wheel, then, uh, Plus and minus is very good too, which I tend to be using a lot of the times when I'm editing, so I don't have to use this bar at the bottom here to zoom in and to zoom out. Now the next one is one that I use, I don't even know, I use this one a million times when I'm editing, and I feel like a lot of people don't use it because they just want to use the blade tool. Now the blade tool you can use as a shortcut, all you have to do is let's say Let's say I want to I want to find a uh, let's say I want to find a portion that I want to cut out here, right? Let's say let's go five frames back here, and if you look at the audio channel down at the bottom, um, you'll see that I actually stopped talking at one point. Okay, here we go. So at this point, this is one of the advice videos that I'm recording right now, my advice channel, and. I'm not really talking here, but here I start to talk, right? So right before here, I'm actually gonna hold down control, then press the K key, and this will automatically uh, use the, it'll automatically trim that specific point, the same way you would use the blade tool to, to sort of make a cut in between them to add an edit. You can add edits just by pressing control K, and then you've basically made your edit, and you can delete whatever you want or move it around however you want. And this is really important because so many times I'll be scrubbing through a piece of footage and then going to blade and then cutting, then going back to the select tool and then moving through a footage again, then going to blade and then cutting. Instead of doing that, you can simply just use the left and right arrow keys and then press control K to constantly do edits like that. So you don't need to constantly change between tools and you certainly don't need to click. Now along with that, the next one I'll go over is the select key. Uh, which is basically D. If you want to select a specific clip, say 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 I've made my cut now, right? Say I say I've made, um, say say I've made. Okay, well I basically separated this clip into three clips, right? Now say I want to select one of these, I can just press the D key and it will select it. And then if I want to delete it, I can just press the delete like that. Or if I want to copy it, I can do it also without having to use my mouse to select the clip. All you gotta do is press D. Now another really good one to use is the W key. And what the W key would do is basically cut out the end of a clip or the beginning of a clip and it will leave no gaps. Let me demonstrate to you what it exactly does. Now, as you see here, I have a clip here where I start talking, right? And a clip here where I'm just silent. I'm not even on camera right here. So what I can do is I can basically go to this portion at the end of the clip right before I walk off the camera here. And let's just go a few frames back. So right here, let's say. Now, say I don't want this last portion right here. I don't want all this stuff in the video. I don't want to I don't want to have this part of the video. So what I can do is obviously yes, I can I can go ahead and press control K, right? And then I can um, and then I can basically select the clip and then I can press backspace to delete. But then I have this gap here, right? What happens if I don't want this gap? Well, what you can easily do, uh, instead, instead of doing control K and then pressing the backspace and then moving the clips, all you gotta do is press the W key and it will automatically trim that portion of the video and then leave no gap and just bring the next clip backwards so that you don't need to move anything around. It's a really useful, uh, really useful shortcut that I'm using a lot more often now because I used to do a lot of dragging, a lot of uh, just blading things and then backspacing and dragging clips. Now I'm using this feature a lot more and it really speeds up a lot of the editing. And then lastly, I want to go over some other, another simple one, which is control C and control V, right? So let's just say, let's just say I want to go ahead and uh, control K here, right? To, to basically, uh, 
cut this portion to blade it and then say I want to select this clip this little portion here right now yes I can press backspace to delete it however I can also just uh, press Control C and then Control V to basically copy or paste it and this is always very useful if you want to copy or paste things Control C and Control V are your best friends and heck while we're at it you've seen me do it many times throughout this video now Control Z will basically undo and then Control Shift Z will redo so these are also some very useful ones I, I use these millions and millions of times Control Z and Control Shift Z very useful to undo and redo and that's pretty much the 10 top shortcuts that I have for you guys. I want to give you guys one bonus one that I, it's just a personal one that I like to use. It's not really one that not everyone likes to use it, but I like to use it a lot. If you go ahead and press your monitor right up here, your timeline monitor here, what you can do is press the tilde key actually, and it will bring you into almost full screen mode, which is really good for like, if you want to watch a portion of the video in a very large mode. And another useful one that I use is control tilde and this will bring you actually into full screen mode so these are just little neat ones that i like to use personally not really you know 100 percent everyone's going to use them uh, most people just you know they don't need to go into full screen but i like to do it because i like to watch a portion of my video in full screen maybe and that's just a little bonus a shortcut that i have for you guys if you want to use it so thank you for watching hopefully you found the video helpful and hopefully you found it useful and most importantly hopefully these shortcuts will help you increase your editing speeds by a lot because it certainly has helped me increase my editing speeds if you enjoyed this video if you like this video if you learned something or if you've enjoyed or learned something from my other videos such as the video i did on uh, doubling your editing speed by using different trim techniques. If you want to check that video out, I will leave a link in the description and a card and annotation on screen right now. But if you like that video or you like some of my other videos such as the GIMP guides or Photoshop guides or Audacity guides or the software guides that I have, you can always donate a dollar to my Patreon. Something as low as that is always helpful and always much appreciated. All you gotta do is press the card in the top right corner of the screen and it'll bring you to the page. I also have a gaming channel, a vlogging channel, music channel, and an advice channel if you want to check those out links are in the description as well as on the end card that you're about to see and with that thank you so much for watching as always and this is just smart and i back sooner than you think don't go anywhere